Richard Krauss. Uh, congratulations on it. Thank you. Um, the movie starts off with, uh, this is a true story, except for the parts that aren't. A uh, little thing, which not. is always kind of interesting to me, because whenever I see uh, based on a true story, that to me means that probably I'm in for a bit of a rough ride. I think because it means that people haven't taken the liberties with the story to turn it into a movie that I think they should. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's too general a statement. I mean, there are films based on true stories. When it says, I think when it says based on true story, they're saying, except for the parts that are not. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think they don't have that parenthesis, yeah, yeah. but uh, very few movies are accurate to yeah. what, very few books or articles are accurate to what really happens, because yeah, you know, right. it's boring, usually. <laughs> What was it about this story then that that drew you in? I I love. I mean, it's a you made the film in Britain, and I I like that it sort of follows along in the tradition of British films that make murderers kind of you know the source of amusement. So sort of the Ealing, Ealing, yeah, Ealing made a whole series of films in the fifties, um, with basically didn't necessarily make them sympathetic, but they made stories about really low life guys. I mean, the Lady Killers or my favorite Kind Hearts and Coronets. Fantastic. Yeah, which to Dennis Price, you know, it's an elegant, witty, sexy, charming movie about a serial killer. <laughs> Did you look back at any of those films for you know, to remind yourself of the tone or anything when you were making this? Movie? The only things I looked at for this were all the other Burke and Hare movies. Most of them are terrible. There's like 16 of them, too. Well, I found 14, but <laughs> I, I, I'm sure there's more. Um, the two best ones... One is very different, but is based on a true story. Based on Burke and Hare is based on the Robert Louis Stevenson, The Body Snatchers, which right. is Robert Wise's first picture for Val Luton. And Boris Karloff and Henry Danielle, they are superb, and it's just a great picture. Um, very different than yeah. the true story. but. And then John Gilling made a, a picture in the 60s, black and white cinemascope called... the. Um, uh oh, flesh in the, the fiends, fiends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in which uh, the is that hammer? No, no, it's not hammer. It's Berman. It's not hammer at all. But it's uh, although Burke and Hare show up as characters in Doctor Jekyll and Miss Hyde. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mrs. Hyde. Mrs. Right? Hyde. Yeah. No, it's Miss Hyde. Oh, is it? Sure, it's him. How could it be Miss? He's not married to himself. <laughs> He's Martin Beswick. It's the same person as you know. But uh, they show up as characters, and uh, Dylan Thomas wrote a wonderful screenplay. Uh, it was a play, and then he adapted it called The Doctor and the Devils. Unfortunately, it was rewritten when they made the movie. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, it's too bad. Great cast, but it's a terrible movie. And, uh, but the, the, the Flesh and the Fiends is damn good. It's, uh, George Rose and Donald Pleasance are just, they're so creepy that you want to wash your hands. And Peter Cushing is so cold as Dr. Knox. Yeah. Peter Cushing was a huge favorite of mine growing up. He's but, wonderful. Yeah, I watched those movies and, and there, there was always something going on. I remember there's a story that uh, Oliver Reed was making a, a film with him and he had gotten drunk and like really hurt him, so bashed him up very badly the night before and he came in and someone came up and slapped him on the shoulder and said, hey Ollie, let's, let's get this going. And he, he made a big production of being ill and, or being hurt and Peter Cushing came to him and said, listen, on film anyway, uh, if you're hurt you must, in, you know, you, you bring that inside and you go, Yes, I'm fine. You don't make a big deal of it. And that's what Oliver Reed sort of built his career on, is this idea of sort of underplaying and having this sort of what, smoldering they're, they're, menace. There are actors like Peter Cush Cushing or, or Christopher Lee or, yeah. you know, no matter what the movie is, they are wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. uh, Peter Cushing had, he, he, was, he was such a, he was a very sweet man, a charming and lovely, kind man. And he was so good at playing these cold, yeah. mean... But if you look at the first Star Wars, I mean, the only menace in that movie is Peter Cushing. Mm -hmm. I mean, he he makes it scary. You know, Darth Vader is you know, James Earl to voice, James Earl Jones. But um, he's just a wonderful performer. And then George went back to later to Christopher Lee. Yeah. You know, I mean, they, these guys, they're wonderful actors. And it's funny because the majority of what they did was crap. And, and no matter what it was... There's a there's a certain professional mm -hmm. who it's a pleasure to work with actors who just it doesn't matter they they're there and they're bringing their game and 
Well, it, it, there's something, I interviewed Mark Strong recently, the British actor, and he was saying, you know, British actors, we turn up, we've got a sharpened pencil, we've got a notepad, we know where to stand, we know, is, is there a Mark, difference? he's full of shit. <laughs> I, I've made too many movies with British actors. There is a, there is a truth about uh, stage-trained actors. Yes. Yeah. And there's a lot of theater training in Great Britain. But, um, no, Mark Strong is, that's, you know, <laughs> rule Britannia. It's not true. But I love British. I mean, some yeah. British actors are fabulous, and so are Canadian and American actors. Yep. I mean, everyone thinks Christopher Plummer is a British actor, yeah, you yeah. know. Born here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, the, the, the cast, I mean, you mentioned Christopher Lee, but you've also got, I mean, this really eclectic cast. We'll get to Simon Pegg and, and the, sort of Andy Serkis and the headliners in a minute. Oh, they're but, wonderful. But I love, you know, you've got Christopher Lee, uh, Costa Gavras is in here, uh, Ray Harryhausen has a, a, a quick uh, appearance. Well, Costa, both Costa and Ray are in about, Ray's in four or five of my movies, and Costa's like in ten. Yeah, and I mean, what is it that I mean? Is it is it fun for you to? I mean, is it's it just only, sort of like a little in joke? It's, for you it's not an in joke. I don't like in jokes. Yeah. I mean, the only time I ever did an in joke was in Schlock, and uh, it, I'll tell you what it was. It, it was, and it's shameless. And it was, there's a character reading a book, and when I shot the insert of the book, I had it at an angle like this, the, you know, forty five degree angle, and I only did that because if you, I would sit in the back of the theater. And then I would say, watch this. And I would wave my hand, and, and someone would see a thousand people <laughs> go like that. But I realize you can't, you can't really do that. You know, I, I feel bad about that. So that's, that's right. why you make your first movie, to try to make a lot of mistakes. Right, and you get all that stuff out yeah. of Yeah, but, you know, filmmakers, no one noticed the filmmakers in my films until the Internet. And I, every movie I've ever made has, I mean, I've had everybody from Robert Wise and Gilo Portacarvo to... I got all the Canadians. I got, you know, Norman Jewison, Adam McGoyan, David Cronenberg. I made David Cronenberg an actor, which, by the way, I regret. He's a, he's a great, he's a great talent, that yeah. guy. He's smart, funny. I'm a big Cronenberg fan. Yeah, he's, got, he's shooting a movie in Toronto right now uh, with Robert Pattinson, and then he's got another one coming out that's the about... Freud, young. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize he was shooting another movie yeah, already. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, with the guy from Twilight? Yeah. Oh, boring. <laughs> <laughs> well, but we'll see. David, well, so will make if, him, if, David will make him interested. I was going to say, if anyone can make the, turn that into a performance, it'll be him. He'll probably have, like, cancer that somebody, <laughs> you know, David. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there'll, there'll be some body horror yeah, somewhere. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although it's funny, it's somebody, uh, David told me, he said, I'm going to Vienna, I'm making a movie about, you know, Freud and Jung. And I said, haven't you always? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. The, the the movie here, yeah, interesting to me, I've, you know, in my notes that I was making when I was watching, there's a sort of a gradual moral descent that these guys go on, which I think is always uh, um, more interesting than just playing them as outright villains. You know, when you... When you well, they are, the movie makes no apologies. You, they, you know, they, you, you see what they're doing. Mm -hmm. and but but there, it's a gradual... I mean, you see why they're doing it as well, I think, right? There's a, there's a, well, we gave a... That part that's not true is uh, Burke's motivation. Yeah. You know, that's... that's a love story. That's yeah. a fantasy, but... The real guys were just scum. I mean, they were. Just, as my, the story is much worse than you know. Well, why? why? You know, by the way, Burke and Hare were never grave robbers. No, they killed people. They right? killed yeah, people. Yeah, they yeah. killed people. They didn't. Yeah. Grave robbing was mostly done by medical students. Right. Until sort of after Burke and Hare were tried, and then didn't it become legal to sell yeah. bodies? No, not to sell bodies, but the, uh, the, you could donate. You could donate yeah. your body. Right. Um, the whole concept of donating your body is now. You know, done, and I hope everyone dies. Like, I've in, signed the back of my card. Yeah, California, the state of California, on my driver's license yeah. is a pink dot, which means if I'm in a car crash, they can take any organ, anything yeah. they want, because it's extraordinary what the, you can do now to save mm -hmm. people's lives. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, talking about uh, Simon Pegg and Andy Circus, tell me about it because Simon Pegg, uh, I don't think of when I think of someone who is a murderer. I don't think of him as as a villain. Did you cast him? deliberately sort of against type or no? Um, well, I don't think it's against type, but yeah, what Simon has that you're speaking to, he's unbelievably sympathetic. I and mean, likable. Likable. Yeah. He's a lovely, he has a persona on screen. And also in this movie, Simon, I don't think, is given enough credit. As an, he's a great actor. Yeah. He doesn't know it, but he's a, <laughs> I'm not joking. I mean, he's a wonderful actor. And if you'll watch, the, if you watch the movie again, you'll see he's playing Stan Laurel. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's, of the two characters in the movie, as written and played, really, uh, Hare is, is far more 
Hare is amoral. Mm-hmm. It's business, and he has no qualms. Whereas, whereas Burke has a conscience and knows what he's doing wrong, which makes him actually worse. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's the bad guy who, who knows, and he's doing it. To, he has a, a means to an end, I guess, but, but he... he uh, well, what he says on, at the end, well, I don't want to yeah, give away the ending, yeah. but what he says at the end is true. Yeah, yeah. Perverted, but <laughs> true. <laughs> and doesn't make anybody feel any better about it, I don't think. Well, it's funny. People are shocked by the ending of the movie, and I'm thinking, well, these are, okay, I yeah. told them it's a true story. You well, know? And, and maybe good, you know? How, how often are you shocked by the end of a movie anymore? Well, also, very few biographical movies have... I mean, William Burke is in my movie, yeah. which I'm very... And he's a lovely guy, and he, he caused no trouble. He hung out on the set. He was really sweet. What is it about those two characters that that uh, you think really uh, have drawn film? I mean, we, we, you said you sound, found 14 uh, versions of the story. I think there's 16 out there, okay. but but, but uh, what is it about these characters that, that keep people coming back to it, and including yourself? Well, mainly because, you know, they're famous crimes. I mean, they're far more heinous... I mean, this is going to sound strange, but there are much worse serial killers than Jack the Ripper. Yeah, yeah. But he was so notorious and famous, or infamous, mm-hmm. or they become legendary. It's like the Zodiac Killer, or Charles Manson, or, you know, the, we remember the famous ones. Yeah, yeah. And then they become mythological, you know, the, like urban legends, Son of Sam. I mean, we, you know, when people, who are those guys in, I was shooting in Vancouver, on the Masters of Horror, and they had just caught them. Oh, well, was it Robert Picton, the guy with the pig farm? The pig farm. Yeah. That they are. The, they are. They killed more people than anyone in yeah. history. And, and fed them to pigs. Fed yeah. them the pigs, and they were delicious, by the way. <laughs> but no, and they. But it's so. So, and then I made a picture in Toronto during the Bernardo trial. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. that's sick stuff. I mean, that wow is that twisted? Yeah. Did you think really Canada? <laughs> But the truth is, humans are deeply flawed, and the great truth that no one wants to admit is they're pretty much the same around the world. Right. Well, see, in Canada, too, it's cold for a good part of the year, so we have to find something to do. Oh, there you so, go. Yeah. And keep it in the family. Yeah. I get it. You know, sort of a Christian thing. <laughs> Richard Krauss.